Hello and welcome to the DYPIU podcast where we dive into the world of tech, explore fascinating stories or uncover the secrets behind success and so much more. With us, we will have incredible guests with their incomparable knowledge, expertise, stories and so much more. This podcast is brought to you by The Book Club, which is a vibrant community dedicated to explore literature through a variety of engaging activities. This is for the joy of reading. Dear listeners, this is the first episode and I am your host, Khushi. Today, we have the honor of hosting a remarkable personality, Mr. Pramar Shore. Sir is a journalist with three and a half decades of experience, which he has put into his book, The News and Making. He has handled features departments as well as whole publications. He has worked for Times of India, India Today, The Telegraph, Hindustani Times and so many more. His last assignment was as the executive director at the Free Press Journal, Mumbai. Hello, sir, and welcome to our podcast. We are so thrilled to have you here. It's an honor for me to be here. So, sir, you've been in this field for more than three decades. Yeah. And so, uh, what can you explain about your life as a journalist? My life as a journalist may not be quite the typical one, but, uh, well... Uh, if you want to know what kind of work I've done, then that's one thing. I've done uh, work in various fields of journalism, though I've never, including uh, you know writing news articles and opinion and edit pieces and uh, feature articles. Though I've never been designated a reporter, mm-hmm. though I've headed a feature department. Even then, I was never designated a reporter. I was just the head of the department. I've basically been a desk person. So, but still I've used my free time to write a lot because it goes hand in hand. The m- if you write, you understand you know, the kind of things that one needs to do to get an article. So, you better your perspective about writing an article becomes better. If you want to edit, okay, the more you edit, the better you are a reporter you are because then you know what was is expected to be there in the final report. In fact, uh, there's something that I'll say in this context uh, that the best reporters are the ones whose articles do not need any editing. The best editors are the ones who can pick up anything from anywhere and write it so well that you will not need any kind of input from any reporter. And this battle between the reporter and the editor is a constant battle which will keep happening and I'd like to see a day when you don't have these reporters and editors as a distinct, uh, as two distinct categories. You have journalists who are doing anything and everything, which is usually the case for a features department. I'd like to see that happen in the news department also. Yes, sir. So that is the thing. So I've done various things. I've been across the country. I've worked for two papers published from abroad. So, sir, moving back 30 years ago, what made you think that journalism is the field that you want to pursue? What was your awakening? Actually, journalism wasn't my first choice. It was my third choice. My first choice was, very funnily, some would say, to be in the Navy, but not just in any part of the Navy. I was very clear from a very early childhood that I wanted to be in the naval intelligence. Okay. Please do not ask me why it takes too long a story. Okay. In my, the shorter part of the story is that one of my uncles, he was head of naval intelligence. He became head of naval intelligence at one part of time. Okay. My second choice was to be an academician. To teach. My third choice was journalism. Okay. And I didn't have any other choices. I, in fact, I gave up uh, positions that I had got. Didn't take up jobs that I had got simply because I didn't want to do that. Uh, so, sir, according to you, what do you think is the most important quality that a journalist should have? Three things. One is that whichever language you work in, you have to to have total control over the total mastery. So much so 
that he should be able to speak non-stop. On and on, on and on. Not only just one time, not only just few days, okay? Throughout your life, you should be able to speak only in that language without making you in the smallest, in fact, there's nothing such as small grammatical mistake, without making any grammatical mistake even while speaking. Even while speaking. You should have that kind of mastery. That is one. Two, you should have innate curiosity about everything and anything. Why is, you know, some something, why has something happened? Why did this car, you know, stop in the middle of the road? Why did the Prime Minister fly from here to Sri Lanka on this date? What is he doing there? Why did my neighbor, you know, go to play f football in the afternoon? Even anything, the smallest and because, you know, see, this curiosity of anything and everything is what will lead you to curiosity of things that matter. 90% of the things that you're curious about will not matter to you as a journalist. May not matter, 50% of them won't matter to you in your life. But when you have that kind of curiosity, it is, then you start you know, having curiosity about things that actually matter and matter to you as a journalist. And without that curiosity, then half the time you won't be able to function properly, at least not up to the level that you're supposed to. English. Yes, sir. So now that we know that we are in the age of AI and technology and there are so many advances that are happening right now, so how do you see journalism evolve in the presence of digital media? Journalism has been evolving. It is not the first time that journalism has had to evolve or has evolved. Initially, there was only print journalism. <laughs> what we nowadays call the print media. Then journalism took one leap. Okay when we had the advent of what is now known as the electronic media. News being flashed over TV channels. Then we took a quantum leap when journalism went beyond print and beyond TV channels to the in internet. Internet. Okay. Now that quantum leap is taking a different form whether for good or for bad, it's moving into beyond normal internet journalism as one would call it, okay? Into a different kind of internet journalism where n number of people and people of various backgrounds are putting out information on cyberspace. Hmm. So talking about various kinds of people coming into this journalism field. So right now what we see is most of the news that our generation gets, we get it from social media or YouTube or Instagram for that matter. And most of these news articles are not posted by actual journalists. These are posted by podcast hosts or maybe content creators. So what do you think that content creators lack that journalists have and vice versa? See, uh... Now, I don't know whether I would make so clear a distinction between content creators and journalists. Because journalists also are creating content. At one way of looking at it is just that. What is content? Content is so many words. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the thing about journalism is that the words that journalists put out is information. And when you say these content creators are giving information, they're doing the same thing as journalists are doing. Huh? So if they are doing that, then they are also at least for that particular period and for that particular act, they are also journalists. As long as they are putting out information. Yeah. Because the role of journalists is to disseminate information. So if anybody is doing that, at least for that specific act, he's a journalist. Now this is why I specify it that way, is that in law, you'll encounter this. You get into law, you'll understand that okay, that in many contracts it'll be written for the purpose of this. Yes. Okay? Now for the purpose of that act, the person is a, is a journalist. Okay. Now, if you're talking about okay, people who are putting out you know content which is not information, then that is different. That is not necessarily journalism. In fact, traditionally, it is not journalism. Even newspapers nowadays, 
some papers have done away with what we call the edit pages or the op-ed pages. Some, <clears throat> but still there are pages which supposedly are feature pages, but they carry things which are analytical, which are which have opinion based uh, content. But this is traditionally not journalism. Traditionally, journalism was simply information. Oh, just I, something happens, I find out each and everything I can about that and publish the article. Cover all my bases as it were before I publish the article. Hi. That is so what do you think is the most heaviest challenge that is faced by today journalists? I wouldn't know about what is the heaviest challenge if you are talking about uh, see one journalist face many challenges as I'm sure everybody in every other field does. but one thing is that you need to get information okay? what are the challenge I face or any department head in the media house or the editor faces one challenge the is that reports are often not complete. Reports uh, reports are often misleading. Reports are often uh, inaccurate in terms of uh, the uh, kind of information they are putting out. Okay, So that is the challenge they face. Maybe journalists uh, face that challenge of getting information, of getting all the information and filling all the gaps in information that, that are there. Maybe journalists face information of, you know, like trying to, you know, uh, cross-check the information to verify that the information that they have got is correct. Those, are, and I said maybe because no, not every time will that happen. It will happen sometimes, yes. So that kind of challenge, those kind of challenges are there. And those kinds of challenges were always there. Nowadays, maybe more because nowadays the information that comes across to people, not only journalists, to everybody is so vast and so all-encompassing that it is very difficult to verify whether the information is correct or not and whether to add on information to ensure that there are no gaps in, in, from, in the report that you are filing. Yeah. But it also there's a but then these are challenges that will come up and this is these are challenges that you will necessarily have to overcome. Otherwise, you'll never be able to file a report. I can pick report after report and show you where there are gaps. But you have to overcome that. There are n number of edit editors I can count on who would you know, not publish reports unless the gaps are filled. Oh. So these... Your challenge is to ensure that information is there. Your challenge is to ensure that information is correct. Your challenge is to ensure that you can <coughs> cross-check that information, not only for correctness, but also get ensure that all the gaps of information are filled so that no reader is left wondering why this happened. So, sir, in your whole career, what is the most interesting story that you've covered or you've come across as a journalist? The most interesting story that I've covered, my God. The one thing that gives me great pleasure is, well, how do I put it? One, there's a feature article that I wrote that you know, sort of, I like a lot. There's a, this is about uh, the backwaters of uh, Kerala, that, mm -hmm. as people call it. We had gone down for a trip. And the feature article I wrote simply because of one particular site, and that is the site which stuck in my mind, which is still there in my mind. There's a, in the backwaters, there's all this, uh, what, for want of a better word, I'd call it a lagoon. Oh dear. There's a small jetty, this very small rural hinterland jetty kind of thing. Yeah. 
there's a picture of Shea, Shea Guevara. Yeah. And there's this dog sitting, facing inside, looking at the picture of Shea. That was astounding. On seeing that, I chose to write a story on that on that part of the backwaters of Kerala. That gave me a lot of this thing. Was this kind of a sight, this kind of a picture, is something that I you can't, you won't see too often. You know, that a dog sitting and obviously the dog doesn't know share Guevara from Michael uh, whatever. It even. I don't know whether dogs have that kind of intelligence or not. I'm not an expert on that, but this thing is, uh, I don't explain it, but that symbolism and that part was, uh, I was told, heavily, you know, left leaning, the people there. The symbolism was too much. It was great. But another thing that I like, I Gave me a lot of pleasure after it got published. <coughs> There's an author which most people of you would know or should know, Amitabh Ghosh. I managed to say, say I had the honor of interviewing Amitabh Ghosh. When he, this was uh, after his, the release of his book, The Sea of Poppies. And, you know, when I interviewed him, before I went to speak with him, I read as much as I could. And that man is a gem. That man is a gem. And his writing is equally priceless. He uses, and I said this also in his interview, in the, uh, when uh, speaking with him, he uses English as, as almost as a plastic entity, that bends it and twists in various ways, but never is it jarring. Yeah, extremely, you know, this is somebody whom I really, what should I say, admire. Then, of course, there's Patrick French, another person I interviewed. But these kind of interviews I did were news articles, what news articles I really. The news articles I did have that role and have the importance. But the memories are more with these kind of records. So, sir, in short, if you would like to give any advice to an aspiring journalist, considering there are so many aspiring journalists here, so what would you give them as an advice? Okay. <coughs> I'll put it in stages because it has to come in the home. First, decide whether you want to be a journalist or not. Have you joined this journalism school because you want to be a journalist? If you have joined it because you want to be a journalist, if you really want to be a journalist, then we come to the next step. What, how much do you want to be a journalist? Because being a journalist is not going to be an easy life. Believe you me, it will just not be easy. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. This is not a negative thing. Okay? Because there are certain things about journalism which you will not get elsewhere. And that is the positive part, and that is the positive part which will take you through, which will carry you through. For I've, what, 34 years? Okay. In August? Last, the August gone by. I completed 34 years. In journalism. The one thing that kept me through those few things on journalism that you will not get anywhere else. And one of those few things is that you are in the news even as it is being made. Okay. You're in the news which people will read about the next day. We'll hear 10 minutes later, at the very least 10 minutes later when you hear it or, or you put it across on the internet, you're already there. Either physically or mentally because you're processing that. <laughs> then uh, these kind of small, small things are there. But the small things make up, more than make up for all the negatives. But the negatives you should be very clear about. It is not easy. 
day in day out you know working making no mistake about anything that you write or anything that you edit okay you have to have passion which is why i ask do you want to be a journalist you want to be a journalist you have to have that passion okay two if you want to be a journalist like i said mastery over the language curiosity if you don't have these things is going to be hurtful yes okay three attitude about work anything and everything anything and everything it doesn't matter what it is okay once you have that keep in mind okay that journalism is a nice place to be it's a fun place to be and most importantly while doing your work enjoy work don't come to work because you have to don't come to work with a dark face come to work enjoy it i'm not saying make uh, the workplace a circus area okay but enjoy working have fun while working crack a joke once in a while if your boss is permit okay talk to your friends have fun work okay and do that and keep in mind that ultimately you are making a difference journalists have been known to make a difference and justifiably so you make a difference very few other professions will you end up making a difference and you make a difference not to one person not to two persons you make a difference to people as a whole when you publish an article which is okay which brings out and the negative of something that somebody has done the negative aspect of it and therefore you you know that negative aspect is done away with it and the positive thing it becomes positive you have made a difference to not one person you made a difference to n number of people mm-hmm. okay so you keep that in mind there are lots of positives to journalism but those positives i would say again far outweigh the negatives otherwise i wouldn't have survived i don't have a halo over head i wouldn't have survived So, so I have written this incredibly knowledgeable work book. I must say, the news of making. Can you tell us what goes behind news making, briefly? What goes behind that book? Whatever I've learned in this thirty-four years, essentially, that's what goes behind the book. Not only in terms of the trade of journalism, but also my life as a journalist. That's what goes behind this. What message or themes do you want readers to take away from this book? One message that I would want is that you do your journalism with integrity. Make sure that you do everything correctly without any mistake ever. It's a very tall task, but like I like saying. if you tell yourself that some mistakes will happen we are after all humans believe me you'll make a lot of mistakes and maybe every day but if you tell yourself that i will not allow myself to make even one mistake ever that's when you see the mistakes be so little that you can endure it okay so do that think it and keep reading keep learning so that not only will you enhance your own knowledge base but that enhancement of your knowledge base will help you work and keep questioning each and everything everything in your life especially things that work are related to journalism question each and every piece of information that you are fed or you have otherwise come across that is very important once once you start questioning that is when you start getting the true, true picture indeed sir so did you any count by any significant challenges while writing this book yes uh, the major challenge i found out was getting it correct I, i i ran through the draft multiple times okay before i felt that it was okay enough to go into print that is one major challenge i did encounter and another challenge i encountered is that not like trying to see this book has a lot of anecdotes or examples but trying to make the exa- give you the examples 
Okay. But at the same time, ensure that nobody can say that, oh, this author is saying this thing about me. This author is saying that thing about that. So I went around creating names of states, creating names of provinces, creating names of whatever. You know? Just had to using this and keep still keeping the example as it was. If you if you actually you go through some of the examples, you realize that such a state doesn't exist. Such a community doesn't exist. But it doesn't, yes. But I created them because otherwise I would have to, you know, like take the name of the actual state or actual community and then somebody could have, you know, got back to me and said, or even if he or she didn't get back, they could have felt hurt. Okay, why is this uh, book saying this and why is that book saying that? Indeed, sir. So writing is a whole long process. So which part of it do you think was the most enjoyable to you? No, all the well. Completely. It was totally enjoyable because this is something I wanted to do. Indeed. I... I can't define any one part or the other. So, but is I, there any book or any author that inspires you like the most? In terms of writing a book or in terms of in life or what? In okay. life, in general, if you had to recommend a book to somebody who is not an avid reader, which book or author would you recommend? Which book or author? One author I would recommend, two authors I would recommend because their books are very well written. And they say a lot. Other two I interviewed. Amitav Ghosh and Patrick French. Oh, please read their books. It's, it's, it's really enjoyable. It's actually enjoyable. You get out. And if you want to go into fiction, then I used to look at mystery novels. I still read a lot of mystery novels. Still have two. Mm -hmm. So, sir, uh, what is the most surprising thing that you've learned about yourself through writing? That I'm not half a, as good a human being as I should be. <laughs> we, we all can be better, essentially. Essentially, that we all can be better in everything we do, including writing, including our work, including our, our own self, that we can always, you know, be better. We can, the bar is never at one place. You see, the thing about life, and about every field is that never say that okay never uh, never compete against x person this comes from a personal example which okay personal thing okay that never compete against your colleague in your department never compete against somebody in the other department never compete against somebody in the other organization compete against yourself that whatever you did today tomorrow try to do better whatever you did now for the next thing you do try and do better every time you know that keep trying to do better and once you achieve that better then again next thing should be even better than that then the next one should be better than that keep raising the bar to your for yourself over and the only way to raise it is that when you compete against yourself that's right okay sir definitely so publishing a book also includes feedbacks and reviews and criticism so how do you handle reviews and criticism from books one way people can handle it is don't look at them <laughs> the other way is that read them, try to see what went wrong, what went right, and then capitalize on that. So earlier you spoke about having your biography or autobiography about fiction book. I didn't say it was an autobiography. I told you about a fiction book where I will be the, I will put myself as the protagonist, and I write this fiction. Yes, about your life. So I just didn't say it was in case about you my life. To... I'm not saying it's about my life. I said. I'm the protagonist, okay, that I will write, write it as if I'm the person, okay, but it'll be a, it'll be fiction and it, I've already, I know what I'm going to write, so I'm the protagonist, it'll, it'll be as if the life of a person from teenage onwards, let's say. So, sir, so just in case if there was a book based on your life, if life cycle, yeah. So, what do you think would be the title of that book? That is the question I'd ask Patrick French. Okay, and I'll give you the answer he gave me. It's too early to even think of that. <laughs> I'd ask you that very same question. <laughs> so, sir, lastly, if you would like to give any small piece of advice to somebody who has just started writing a book and is not a good author, so what would you give it to them? Not a good writer in terms of writing... Yeah, maybe not a good author in terms of ideas or not a good author. 
maybe this person has just started writing he's a quite naive in this field so what advices would you like to give to them first understand what you want to write be very clear as to what you want to write okay set then break it up into sections small smaller bits okay the whole idea of what you want to write bigger and smaller bits then break that up also into smaller bits and then write one bit by the other and as you write one bit by the other then connect the various bits go about that way and it will be a little easier for people who don't have the full flow in mind yes sir so that brings us to the end of this podcast uh, thank you so much sir it was thank you very much it was here. wonderful and i'm quite well i will say honored that you people chose to speak with me so the honor is ours completely ours thank you so much thank you very much that's a wrap for today's episode to our listeners who haven't already read the book please go ahead and purchase this book news in the making a huge thank you to sir for joining us and sharing such insightful information if you found this episode helpful do share it with others and leave a feedback as always we love hearing from you feel free to reach out to us for any more additions to these episodes thanks for tuning in i am kushin kushi choudhury signing off until next time keep exploring keep learning and be inspired